Open theism claims that God has limited knowledge and cannot predict human actions that stem from free will. In contrast, the Bible emphasizes God's omniscience, highlighting his understanding of the innermost thoughts, desires, and intentions of humanity. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. Psalm 139 verses 1 to 4. I the Lord search the heart and test the mind, to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Jeremiah 17 verse 10. And you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and with a willing mind, for the Lord searches all hearts and understands every plan and thought. 1 Chronicles 28 verse 9a, O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind. Jeremiah 20 verse 12, And they prayed, and said you, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen. Acts 1 verse 24. Open theists suggest that Greek thought has influenced the Christian concept of God, turning theology more philosophical than rooted in the Bible. The belief that God is impassable, incapable of suffering, and immutable has led to the loss of the dynamic relationship between God and humanity. In contrast to the Bible, where God reacts to human actions and is even depicted as changing his mind, the doctrine of omniscience, claim open theists, reduces humans to automatons. They argue that genuine relationships involve mutual participation, lacking if God is viewed as an all-powerful, all-knowing ruler instead of a compassionate being who empathizes with human suffering. Clark Pinnock a prominent advocate of open theism dismissed his earlier Calvinist beliefs as nonsensical. He argued that attributing contradictory qualities to God, such as hating sin while willing it in secret, or inviting sinners to come while knowing they cannot, is not mysterious but nonsensical. Pinnock emphasized that God embodies love, which implies reciprocity and mutual engagement, fundamental in all personal relationships. According to open theists, God lacks definite knowledge of future events, his eternity is not timeless and he may be surprised by worldly occurrences. While God possesses vast knowledge, he cannot foresee all future outcomes, and there is no assurance of the success of his plans. Like a skilled chess player, God can respond to unforeseen circumstances initiated by his creations, leaving room for surprises. This perspective is viewed as a significant motivator for genuine interaction with God, allowing individuals to actively engage in the relationship. Open theism goes against the historical teachings of the church a trait often seen in various sects and cults throughout history. By rejecting the traditional beliefs of the Church, whether Catholic, Orthodox, or Protestant, regarding God's immutability and omniscience, open theists prioritize their own interpretation of the Bible over the understanding upheld by the Church for the past 50 generations. Open theism takes a radical approach to Scripture, particularly when it comes to prophecy. Prophetic writings, and prophecies in general, clearly suggest that God has full knowledge of the future. If God were unaware of what's to come, predictive prophecy wouldn't be possible. The problem arises in how open theists interpret passages that describe God with human emotions. They focus heavily on verses where God is said to regret or repent, implying that God changes his mind and emotions. However, they do not apply the same literal interpretation to passages that attribute human physical features to God, which are widely understood as anthropomorphisms. It's inconsistent for open theists to emphasize one aspect while ignoring the other. The scholarship behind open theism is outdated. The idea that the early church was heavily influenced by Greek philosophy was popularized by Adolf von Harnack, 1851-1930, but this view has been debunked many times. Scholars like Alois Grillmeyer, J.N.D. Kelly, and Yaroslav Pelikan have shown that the early church fathers used Greek philosophical terms not because they were influenced by Greek thought, but because they had to counter heretical interpretations of the Bible. They adapted this language to effectively communicate biblical truths, infusing it with new meaning that aligned with traditional Christian beliefs. Additionally, open theists seem unaware that their views resemble the errors of Socinianism from the 16th and 17th centuries. Open theists have a limited understanding of the early church fathers, especially on the topic of God's impassibility. They, along with some modern theologians following Jürgen Moltmann, argue that only a God who suffers can truly help us. However, as Thomas Wienandy has shown, the Church Fathers did not teach that God was detached from suffering. Instead, they believed that while God could not be constrained from outside, He did suffer in the person of Jesus Christ, who took on human nature. This view affirms that God is both able to suffer with us and remains fully sovereign. 
Open theism presents a distorted view of God by focusing too much on his love and not enough on his justice or holiness. Threatening the doctrine of God's simplicity. Sin is minimized, and biblical statements about God's love are taken out of context. For example, Richard Rice in The Openness of God ignores linguistic developments that show the Greek words for love, gamma alpha pi omega, agape, and phi lambda omega, filio, were used interchangeably by the first century. His understanding of reconciliation also overlooks the work of Leon Morris, who demonstrated that God is the primary one to be reconciled in Christ's atoning death. Moreover, the claim that God is unchanging does not mean his relationships with his creation do not change. As creation changes, so do the relationships between God and his creatures. True statements about God can be misunderstood if taken out of context, particularly the context of his covenant with his people. God's love for his covenant people differs from his love for creation in general. Open theism also bears a strong resemblance to process theology, suggesting a mutually dependent relationship between God and creation, marked by dynamic change. It also hints at panentheism, where God and the world are interconnected in a way that implies God's plans could be continuously frustrated. This view implies that the Incarnation and Atonement were reactions to an unforeseen crisis, and that God cannot be certain his purposes will succeed, leaving even the final victory in doubt. This uncertainty could extend to the Eshetan, raising the question of whether God can be sure there won't be another rebellion in heaven. The open theists claim that their view of God makes prayer dynamic and exciting is problematic. If God's plans are provisional, how can prayer be truly effective? Basinger suggests that God's lack of certain knowledge about the future makes prayer a thrilling spiritual journey, but this undermines confidence in God's sovereignty. Open theism is also a reflection of postmodern thinking, where one chooses the concept of God that they find most appealing. This perspective, as suggested by Basinger, turns God into a matter of personal preference which borders on idolatry. Thomas J. Ord takes an even more radical stance by proposing that God is essentially uncontrolling love, which he believes is necessary to address the problem of evil. According to Ord, God's self-emptying nature, kenosis, means he is powerless to prevent evil, as he is love and cannot coerce anyone. This view disrupts the unity of God by elevating love above all other attributes and is more grounded in human culture and experience than in scripture. If God is powerless to prevent evil, how can that be truly loving? Such a view is fundamentally opposed to biblical teaching and the beliefs of the universal church. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the good news that brings life, hope, and salvation. But this good news starts with the sober truth. We are all sinners, separated from a holy God by our rebellion and sin. No amount of good works, religious deeds, or self-improvement can bridge the gap between us and God. But God, in his mercy, provided the way. Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, came into the world to save sinners. He lived the perfect life we could not live, and he died the death we deserved on the cross. In his death, he bore the wrath of God for our sins, and in his resurrection, he defeated death and secured eternal life for all who trust in him. Today, the call is simple but profound, repent and believe in the gospel. Repentance means turning away from your sin and turning to God, acknowledging that you cannot save yourself. Believing means placing your trust fully in Jesus Christ, his life, death, and resurrection, as your only hope of salvation. This is not about religion or ritual, it's about a relationship with the living God through Jesus Christ. The true gospel is not about what you can do, but about what Christ has done. Trust in him alone for your salvation, and you will be saved. Turn to Jesus today, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him.